Welcome to Complexity Made Simple and my name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter well we're going to do something relatively simple because we're just going to look at run charts but something that I realized maybe I find simple but I should pass this skill on to other people how to read a run chart okay so this is what the video is all about reading run charts now I was at a client yesterday we were looking at some uh, improvement projects some Six Sigma projects one of the things I always encourage my my clients to do uh, when they've got a project you've got to have a run chart it's got to be a run chart of your primary measure and when I'm teaching people and I'm interacting with clients and I'm saying how should you behave and how should you find out whether your process is working well or working badly please ignore the numbers I know you love data data is useless please have a run chart and I always say to them have a run chart and then look at it and you'll learn something about your process and then I was looking at a run chart yesterday with a client and I realized that the way I was looking at the run chart had a certain element of skill involved in it that isn't always obvious so first thing please have a run chart have a graph now I'm not a fan of block diagrams I'm a fan of run charts in other words a line graph let's have one yeah that's the first thing I'm gonna say but then it's a case of well okay what are we looking for okay so what are we looking for on the uh, on the run chart so you're sort of looking for signals you're looking for signals which is the state of the physics what's the state of the physics of your process okay so let's look at some some basic signals that tell me the state of the physics and then I'm going to show you what I was looking at yesterday that made me realize that I was looking in a particular way so what's the state of the physics okay let's look at the first one let's let's put some tolerances on my on my run chart okay what's the state of the physics of that problem clearly I'm making defective results what's the state of the physics it's simple too much variability there's a simple one now what does that mean it means that if I drew the capability diagram I've got defects at the lower end I've got defects at the higher end what physics have I got to transform I've got to squeeze that variability in okay that means process control all right so there's a symptom okay how about a different how about a different graph then um, let's have a look let's do a different one okay like this and then I'll put the tolerances on and they look like that what's the state of your physics well the state of your physics is you're off target so what would that look like well it would look like this wouldn't it if I put tolerances on there we're sitting on the lower tolerance and I've got defects out here so what have I got to do I've got to shift the center now that's a different problem to this that's the state of my physics that's the physics that I've got to transform this probably can be done with one lever this is multi-variable 
It takes a lot of work to find all the variables. There's lots of controls going to be needed. And then potentially, what can we do? We can bring that distribution in like that. Whereas this one, we just need to shift it on target. It's a simple thing. What's the state of the physics? Okay, so what else might you see? Uh, let's have a think. Let's think of one other. You might see, you might see this going on. All right, so process is, is just trending towards disaster here. One of my clients did this. By the way, they only plotted the graph when they hit the disaster line up there. Two years this disaster had been coming at them. They never plotted the graph. All right, what else? You might see this. Okay, now it would be, un it would be unusual necessarily to see this, but again, What's the physics? Something changed. What, what it's telling me is this has a root cause. Root cause means there's one thing did that. Something's changed. Same with this. Usually one thing can transform the center, the average result. Okay. So what's the state of the physics? Too much variability or one thing? It's got a root cause. So what was the what was the pattern that I saw yesterday? Let me just clean the board and I'll show you the pattern. Okay, let me put that pattern up and I'll I'll show you what I was thinking as I was as I was looking at it. So we had a we had a single sided we had a single sided problem. All right, so higher is worse, lower is better. And the graph was, was doing this. So what you got was quite a lot of noise, but then the graph was going sort of up and down. So it was doing that. And I basically said to them, I said, look, you've got, you've got both of these, effectively, you've got both of these problems at the same time. You've got quite a lot of variability here. And if we could reduce the variability, we can get these peaks away from the red line like that. So that makes us much more reliable, less risk. Let's get away from the tolerance. But the other thing was the process was swinging up, staying up, then swinging down, staying down. So although there was too much variability this way, it was multi-causal, that needs addressing. So it needs a uh, cause and effect analysis, probably variability analysis. There's also the thing that causes it to go up and go down. There's a root cause in there. Something's making that thing swing around. So there's sort of a double problem going on. And I realized that I was looking at this and looking at it as a, as a sort of a double problem. Whereas normally what I point out to people is run charts are very simple. You either see problems with the signal or you see problems with the noise. And yesterday I went, I can see both there. And we, we had a discussion about that. They've gone off to try and nail these, these, these uh, causes down. So they're off doing the work to do that. But I also thought, you know what? There's some learning here that we need to pass on. One of the big learnings, of course, the, the run chart, please have one. You will never see this in, in data. You will never see this in a data set. You look at numbers, you can never see these patterns. You just plot a graph. It's the simplest thing ever. It takes literally two seconds using Excel. Obviously you could have even plotted it using a pencil and a piece of paper. But the things that you learn from a run chart, I'll give you one last point as well, just before I go, the things that you learn from a run chart. This is the other thing we discussed yesterday. The things that you can learn from a run chart. 
I've just set my machine up. It's a brand new batch and I've taken a first off. The first off lands there. What's that telling you? Now obviously people would say, oh well, you haven't put the tolerance on there, Paul. I'd compare it to the tolerance and you go, okay, what's that telling you? And you go, well, I'm inside my tolerance. I'm good to run. How about if I show you this? This is the graph of the last time this machine ran. This is the graph of a, of a history of the machine running like this. The machine normally runs like that. Now what is this data point telling you? That, that, that piece of knowledge that's telling you, wow, something's wrong, something's changed, something's not been set up correctly in this machine. I've got a problem and I need to sort it out. That knowledge only came from the run chart data. The data point was useless on its own. But by comparing it to historical performance, the data point grows in information. You know, so you can make more money just by plotting run charts. Now, people would also turn these into process behavior charts, into SPC charts. You can also do that, of course. But if I can just encourage you, get a graph out, always plot a graph, always let the operator see the last graph that was performed, and then the next data point is gold. And the operator who's at the point of activity and in charge of all the money you're making. That's what the operator's in charge of. The person that's in charge of the most amount of money gets the most amount of information because you've used a run chart and you read it correctly. That is the power of the run chart.